Tammy Markart, convicted for a crime that never occurred. How did an innocent mother spend nearly 14 years in prison for the death of her son? She was young, abused, a mother, living in poverty, and she was innocent. Let me paint for you the story of Tammy Markart, the tragic loss of her son Kenneth, and the individual circumstances and societal wrongdoings that led to her wrongful conviction. Tammy was born in Toronto, Ontario to an Anishinaabe father and a European mother. She was raised only by her mother and grew up in abuse and in poverty. Already, Tammy had lived a hard life. Sadly, things would not get easier for her. Tammy eventually left the care of her mother and lived on her own. She continued to live in poverty and even found herself homeless from time to time. At the age of 18, she became involved with a man named Robert Nelson, and just a year later, in 1990, they were expecting their first son. Tammy's relationship ended shortly after the birth of her son, Kenneth. Two months before Kenneth's second birthday, Tammy married Rick Markart. Sadly, like most other men in Tammy's life, Rick was abusive to her and her son. This led to frequent contact with Children's Aid Society, and while Kenneth was never taken from her, at one point, Tammy willingly put him in the care of CAS to protect him. Kenneth also suffered from many medical conditions, such as asthma, pneumonia, and epilepsy, a condition that causes severe seizures. Because of these medical conditions, Tammy brought Kenneth to the hospital many times. October 9th, 1993. It started out like any other day. After waking up from a nap, Tammy went into the bedroom to check on two and a half year old Kenneth. She had thought she heard him calling out for her. Upon entering the room where her son was resting, she realized he had become tangled in the bed sheets and was gasping for air. In a panic, Tammy tried unsuccessfully to free him. She quickly called 911, the emergency line, in hope of saving her son. The dispatcher instructed her to perform CPR on her son who had now stopped breathing, but Tammy was too distraught to follow the instructions. Finally, the paramedics arrived and rushed the toddler to the hospital where he was resuscitated. Unfortunately, Kenneth had experienced too much brain damage and succumbed to his injuries three days later. What happened next led to Tammy's arrest, conviction, and life sentence for a crime that never occurred. Crown painted Tammy as a young mother with limited financial resources and living in an unstable and abusive environment. They suggested that Tammy lacked good coping and parenting skills. As a result of her marginalization, Tammy was the target at the end of the police and prosecution's tunnel vision. To quote Tammy's defense lawyer, James Lockyer, she was an easy target for the criminal justice system. In 1993, Tammy was tried by judge and jury in Whitby, Ontario. The Crown's case was centered around the testimony of forensic expert Dr. Charles Smith. Dr. Smith was the leading expert in Canada on criminally suspicious deaths of children at the time, despite his lack of training in forensic pathology. After completing Kenneth's autopsy, Smith concluded that Kenneth's death was not accidental, but was rather due to asphyxia caused by strangulation and smothering. The Crown would argue that Tammy must have smothered her son in a moment of frustration over the chaos of her own life. In hindsight, we know that this conclusion was false, and that it was rather a product of Smith's dangerous mother ideology. Once again, Tammy's experiences with poverty and abuse bring her one step closer to a wrongful conviction. The mindset of the police, prosecutors, and expert witness followed the think dirty approach. This is a protocol used in the investigation of deaths involving young children. It, however, can lead to the ignorance of other reasons why children die. Kenneth likely died of an epileptic seizure. However, because of tunnel vision, and because of the think dirty approach, the Crown ignored this possibility. 
The defense argued that an epileptic seizure was the cause of Kenneth's death, and Tammy, a good mother, was innocent. This argument, however, was not well received, for the defense did not call upon a medical expert of their own. Because Tammy was poor, and the defense had limited resources at their disposal, they could not afford to hire an expert witness. Additionally, they could also not find one willing to testify in opposition to the leading expert in the country. During the trial, the jury heard a considerable amount of testimony regarding Tammy's reaction, emotion, and behavior to losing her son. The judge instructed the jury not to consider these arguments as it was unreliable and based on subjective understanding. However, the jury continued to listen to countless testimonies for how a mother ought to react to losing a child. On October 24, 1995, Tammy was convicted of Kenneth's murder. She was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for 10 years. Tammy maintained her innocence and appealed her conviction to the Ontario Court of Appeal. However, in 1998, her appeal was dismissed by un a unanimous court. In 2004, Tammy applied to AIDWIC. And in 2005, the long road to Tammy's exoneration began with a letter from Innocence Canada to the Chief Coroner for Ontario and the Attorney General, urging a full public inquiry into Smith's work. There was an increasing amount of negative attention on Smith and a growing suspicion of the validity of his work. People were beginning to realize that he had been unprofessional and came to false conclusions on the deaths of many infants. In 2007, Dr. Succo, a professor of forensic medicine, was assigned to review the case. He concluded that Smith's findings of asphyxia were illogical and completely against scientific evidence-based reasoning. In 2009, after spending almost 14 years in prison, Tammy was released. Later that year, the Supreme Court of Canada ordered the case to be brought to the Ontario Court of Appeals to consider the new evidence and determine if Tammy's conviction was a miscarriage of justice. This process took two long years, but in 2011, the Ontario Court of Appeal quashed her conviction and ordered a new trial to commence the following year. Before the new trial could begin, the Crown withdrew charges against Tammy. Tammy was a free woman, but her hardship and her struggle will never truly be resolved. The wrongful conviction of Tammy Markhart was a result of systemic and professional wrongdoing within the criminal justice system and prejudice and marginalization that rendered Tammy utterly powerless. There is no way of knowing how many innocent people have been and continue to be wrongfully convicted. Let Tammy be a reminder that each and every one of us are at risk of falling victim to a wrongful conviction at any moment. Each actor in the criminal justice system has an obligation to work together to prevent wrongful convictions from occurring in the future. <laughs>